Hi friends, I'm sure you must have heard of the famous crow and jug story. It goes something like this. Once there was a thirsty crow, but the water in the jug was low. Pebbles in the jug he did drop. And the water rose up to the top. The crow drank water and was no more thirsty. This is an example of Archimedes' discovery. And this discovery of Archimedes regarding water displacement is going to be the topic of this video. In this video, we'll be talking about Archimedes' volume discovery and then we'll do our top three questions on this topic. In the next video, our focus is going to be on Archimedes' principle. So you can watch that video after this one. I'll be putting a link in the description below. And once you watch the two videos, I'm sure the concept is going to be crystal clear to you. Let's start with what I like to call as Archimedes' volume discovery. Now, as the legend goes, Archimedes discovered this while he was taking bath. So as he was entering his bathtub, he saw the water overflowing. And then he had this eureka moment. He discovered that the volume of the liquid displaced by a body is equal to the volume of the submerged part of the body. So if the entire body is underwater, then the volume of the liquid displaced will be the volume of the body. And the crow used this concept in the crow and jug story to push or displace the water up. So then the volume of the water displaced was equal to the volume of the pebbles. Let's understand this concept with the help of some experiments. I'm going to lower this ball into this beaker full of water like this. And as expected, you saw that the water overflows into the bowl here. Now why is that? Why is the water overflowing? It's because the ball is squeezing the water out. There's no more space, right? But it's hard to measure the volume of the water displaced accurately because as you can see, all the water has not gone into the bowl here. Some of it is still sticking to the beaker. So some water is wasted here. So let's try this experiment differently. So now I'm going to tilt this beaker so that the water overflows into the smaller beaker here. So let's go ahead and do it one more time. So I'm going to lower the ball again. So as you can see, this ball has displaced water into the smaller beaker. Now what is the volume of the water displaced? It's 200 ml or 200 centimeter cube of water. So by Archimedes first discovery, the volume of this ball is the volume of the water displaced, which is 200 centimeter cube. Now how can we verify that? So we know that this ball is a sphere. Now what is the formula for volume of a sphere? It's 4 by 3 pi r cube, where r is the radius of this sphere. So I've actually gone ahead and checked that with the help of a vernier calipers. So I went ahead and measured the diameter of this ball here, like this. And the diameter of the ball is 7.2 centimeter. So the radius is 3.6 centimeter. And now if I use the formula 4 by 3 pi r cube, I'm getting the exact same volume, 200 centimeter cube. So Archimedes' discovery is correct that the volume of the water displaced by this ball is the volume of the ball itself. We can actually find the volume of the ball in an easier way by measuring the rise in the level of the water. So as you can see, the initial volume of the water here is 
600 centimeter cube. So I'm going to lower this ball one more time and keep an eye on the level of water. So as you can see, the level of water has risen to 800 centimeter cube. So the difference in the volume of water is the volume of this ball. So which is 800 centimeter cube minus 600 centimeter cube. So the volume of this ball is again the same thing 200 centimeter cube. So displaced volume is basically the volume that rises or the volume that overflows. This discovery is very useful for measuring the volume of irregular solids. Archimedes used it to measure the volume of the king's crown. Now I don't have a crown so I'm going to use my watch instead. So my watch doesn't have a regular shape. I can't use the formula of a cuboid like L into B into H or that of a sphere. So what am I going to do? I'm going to lower it into this beaker of water. Now I don't want you to try it because I don't want you to spoil your watch. So let's go ahead and try. Now what is the initial volume of water here? As you can see it's 150 centimeter cube. And I'll lower my watch into this beaker. So as you can see the water level has gone up to 175 centimeter cube. So what is the volume of my watch? It's the difference in volume. That is 175 minus 150, which is 25 centimeter cube. So my watch has a volume of 25 centimeter cube. I hope it's still working. So let's place Archimedes volume discovery on our concept board. When a body is completely immersed in the liquid, we can say that the volume of the liquid displaced is the volume of the body. Now let's check the partially immersed case. So what are some examples of objects that are partially immersed in water? One example is a floating ball like this. As you can see, it's partially immersed in water. Or an iceberg is another example of an object partially immersed in water. Now if I take out this ball and if you put your hand in the water like this, so you can see that your hand will be partially immersed in water. So let's understand the partially immersed case with the help of an experiment. With the help of this string, I'm going to partially immerse this ball into the beaker of water here. But first let's check what is the initial volume of water. As you can see, it's 600 centimeter cube. Now I'm going to lower the ball so that it's partly immersed in water. So what is the volume of water now? As you can see, it's 700 centimeter cube. So how much water has been displaced? So it's 700 minus 600 centimeter cube. So that's 100 centimeter cube of water has been displaced. So what is the volume of the ball which is under the water? That's right, it's 100 centimeter cube, the volume of the water displaced. So this was our partially immersed case. Let's place the partially immersed case on our concept board. For the partially immersed case, the volume of the liquid displaced is equal to the volume of the submerged part of the body. Now that we are done with Archimedes volume discovery, are you ready to move on to our top three questions on this topic? Here are the top three questions. I encourage you to pause here and try to solve these questions. I'll be posting a video on the solutions soon. You can find a link to the solutions video in the description below or search for it on my channel page. I hope Archimedes volume discovery is really clear to you now. So next time when you put your hand in a mug of water and you see the water level rising, 
I want you to remember Archimedes' volume discovery. Or let's say when you go swimming, I want you to think how much water are you displacing in the pool. That's right, it's the volume of your body that is under the water. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I have another video that covers Archimedes' principle. So I recommend you to watch that next. I'll be putting a link in the description below. So do remember to like, comment and share this video and go hit the subscribe button for my channel.